In this video, we're going to examine the motion of the simple harmonic oscillator, a mass attached to a spring that is oscillating horizontally. To begin with, we're going to consider the mass at two different positions. First, at uh, its unstretched or equilibrium position. This is when the mass is attached to the spring and the spring is not stretched at all. And then uh, in the bottom picture, uh, we have shown the mass at some other position where the spring is stretched a little bit. Now, you know that in the second position, there will be a force acting on the mass. And from Hooke's law, you know that the force will be equal to negative kx. So what can we do with this? Well, uh, Newton's third law tells us that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So let's make that substitution. But instead of calling acceleration a, I'm going to write it as the second derivative of position, d squared x by dt squared. And there's a good reason for doing that. When I rearrange the equation, I get d squared x by dt squared is equal to negative k over m x. And this, you will remember from the previous video, is the condition for simple harmonic motion. When we see an equation of the form d squared x by dt squared is equal to minus omega squared x, we know that we have simple harmonic motion. And in this case, omega squared is equal to k over m. And so we can go on and write down the period. Period is 2 pi over omega. So that's 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So what we've done here is we've determined that the simple harmonic oscillator undergoes simple harmonic motion. So I guess it's well named. And uh, we have determined the period of that simple harmonic motion. It's worth taking a moment to think about what affects the period of the simple harmonic motion. You can see that uh, m and k are the two things that affect period. So if you increase the mass that is attached to the spring, that will in turn increase the period or the amount of time it takes for the motion to repeat. And if you increase the spring constants, that means using a uh, tighter spring, then you actually reduce the period or the amount of time it takes for the motion to repeat. You can also think about what things don't show up in the period equation. For example, you might think that the amplitude should affect the period of the motion, but it's not in there, and so the amplitude does not affect the period of the motion. All right, so let's change things a little bit and look at a mass that is oscillating on a vertical sp spring. So there it is. Uh, I kind of gave it away by saying that the mass was oscillating, in fact, this mass is undergoing simple harmonic motion, uh, but you don't want to have me just tell you that. We have to show that that's the case. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, let's begin by just looking at a picture of the spring without any mass attached to it at all. There it is. Um, and you can see that we've uh, marked off the y equals zero line. That's going to be uh, right at the end of the unstretched spring. Now add a mass to the spring, and you can see it stretches out a little bit. Um, let's call this the equilibrium position. This is the place where the mass can rest uh, with the string, spring pulling up on it and mg pulling down. So there are those forces. mg is acting down on the mass. Negative k times y equilibrium is acting up on the mass. That's Hooke's law again. And uh, in that equilibrium position, those forces balance each other. Finally, let's look at some other position where the mass is not at the equilibrium position. Of course, if, it, if the mass is going to be moving up and down, that's not always going to be at the equilibrium position. So here, we uh, will say that the mass is displaced by y. And it's also nice to define that distance there. The distance between equilibrium and the current position, we'll call that x. And now we have a little bit of work to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the picture all the way on the right 
and we're going to try to determine what net force is acting on that mass. Well, of course, you know that mg is acting down on the mass, and then there is going to be an upward force of the spring. That's going to be equal to negative ky, where y is the displacement from equilibrium. Now, uh, if you go back to the middle picture, uh, the mass on the left, remember that mg is going to be equal to negative ky equilibrium, and so we can make that substitution. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is just do a little bit of algebra and show that F is equal to K times the quantity Y equilibrium minus Y. Now that's a useful thing because if you go back to the picture you can see that Y and Y equilibrium are related to X and the relationship is that X is equal to Y minus Y equilibrium. And we're going to make a substitution uh, into that equation in a moment, but first let's just quickly take the derivative of X with respect to time and the second derivative of X with res respect to time, and you'll see at the bottom there you get D squared X by DT squared is equal to D squared Y by DT squared. And that's important because that tells you that um, you can uh, that, that the acceleration with respect to x is the same as the acceleration with respect to y. Okay, so next we're going to go back to uh, the f is equal to k times the quantity y equilibrium minus y equation, and we're going to substitute for f mass times acceleration. That's mass times d squared y by dt squared. And then we're going to use this relationship to change that into mass times d squared x by dt squared. On the right hand side of that equation, we're going to use uh, the other relationship, which, which says that y equilibrium minus y is equal to negative kx. And now we've got something that's looking very good. This equation is once again the condition for simple harmonic motion. So let's take that equation. We can see that the mass uh, is indeed oscillating and it's looking like simple harmonic motion. And uh, we can rearrange that equation. d squared x by dt squared is equal to negative k over mx. And then we remember that d squared x by dt squared is equal to negative or omega squared x, and so that means that omega squared is equal to k over m. And finally, it's always nice to find the period once we have omega, and period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So what have we done here? Well, uh, we have found that the period for the mass oscillating on a vertical spring is exactly the same as the period for a mass oscillating on a horizontal spring. It's a little bit surprising, but that is the way it works out. So that's it for the simple harmonic oscillator and the mass oscillating on a vertical spring. In the next video, I'll show you uh, how to deal with the physical pendulum.